speeds. Class sizes are 30, 25, 30, and 35 kids in a class, which is an all-time high. Anybody who spent any time in a classroom, remember when you were kids, coming back to the first day of school as an eight-year-old or a 12-year-old. If you looked around you and saw 34 other kids in that classroom, you knew that it was going to be a tough year because you were going to have a hard time learning. Children thrive when teachers are trusted when they're in small class sizes and every child is seen for who they are. And children suffer when they have large class sizes, when teachers are treated like suspects, and children are treated as one of a large mass. My vision for public education is that no fourth grader should have to be in a classroom bigger than 20 kids. Everybody should have access to art, to music, to a guidance counselor. Right now in New York State, there are guidance counselors who are providing guidance to as many as 350 to 500 kids. That isn't meaningful guidance counseling. We're taking care of that many kids. And that is a direct result of Andrew Cuomo's best education. We can, again, have some of the best public, we can again, and have the best public education in the country. But to do that, we need to reinvest in our public schools. I'm uh, proud to introduce first Billy, I guess, to speak briefly uh, as a, a person. Uh, and a real expert on public education. My name is Bill East and I'm active on education issues. And I'm here personally to support Zephyr Teachout and Tim Wu because they have a vision for education that's focused on the students because we have seen again and again Andrew Cuomo's uh, denial of the needs of our students. We have students uh, in the school right behind us. The schools have faced devastating cuts. Uh, damaging to the student's future. We need to re reverse that, and that's why we need Zephyr to teach out to uh, uh, be the governor and Tim will be the governor. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone announce your Okay, great. Good afternoon. My name is Shino Tanikawa. I'm the president of the New York City Kids Political Action Committee, which wholeheartedly endorses Zephyr teach out for governor today. We're sending out a press release this afternoon with our endorsements. We need a governor in this state who fights against privatization of our public education, who believes in the honorable, respectable profession of teaching, who believes in small class sizes, reducing overcrowding in our schools, funding our schools adequately and appropriately, and defends our most vulnerable students. Students who are not native speakers, students with special needs, students who come from underprivileged houses. And we believe Zephyr is the best candidate for moving us in the right direction. So we are happy to endorse Zephyr. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. One of the reasons I ran for I'm running for lieutenant governor is my belief that New York is the fabled land of opportunity. That New York State is a place where people have come for hundreds of years to make a new life here, to discover a career, family, the, the fruits of this astonishing state. And I'm, I'm a person who's moved here and I've found it to be an astonishing place to live. And I think that we need to do everything we can to protect this tradition, this centuries-long tradition of New York as the home and the place of opportunity. And that starts in many places, but one of the places that starts is with our public education programs. Public education is the key to avoiding a caste society. It is the key to creating the kind of state where people can start from limited means and move upward and feel that there is a real possibility to make it here. I am myself a product of public education. My wife is also a product of public education. And as the beneficiaries of well-funded public education systems, we were able to build our lives, ultimately settle in New York, and, and have successful lives, successful careers. I am concerned that the next generation will be denied the kind of sense of opportunity that I grew up with. 
that they will be born into a society, born into a state, that where they start is where they finish. That is to say, if you are born poor, you stay poor. If you are born rich, you stay rich. And it's because public education, lack of funding for public education, reinforces that, reinforces the caste system. We did not have a revolution. New York did not separate from the, from, uh, from the British Empire in order to be a stratified society with aristocracy who rules and with masses who toil away and have no hope of rising. Refunding, re-evaluating the public sector and all parts of the public sector through the public education is, in my mind, an urgent priority for the people of the state and for the government of the state. And I thank you very much. And it's an honor to be standing in front of a public school on the open first day of school. Great. Thanks so much. We have one more speaker. Oh, we have a speaker. Good. <laughs> Yay, Tim! Thanks. <laughs> That's right. So introduce yourself and tell us about your best class. Good um, My name is Elizabeth Vaughan. Um, I'm actually from the Bronx, and I know it's really far from here. Uh, I go to the NYC I School in this building, and my favorite class is um, a class called Physical Computing. I took it last year, and it's actually been one of the most amazing classes I've ever took. We got to learn how to make the electronic cars that you see at Hallmark and make those teddy bears that light up that you would see at Toys R Us. And even though this sounds like a college class, they were able to put it to a high school level in a creative and enjoyable way where you had the math and the science aspect, but also the creative freedom to work on your own project. Thanks so much. That's yeah. terrific. <laughs> <laughs> applause. That's given his endorsement of Kathy Hochul as a true progressive yesterday? I, I think um, putting us along with Bill de Blasio is a better reflection of where we are. Um, that along with de Blasio and Elizabeth Warren, we see a rise of, of true traditional Democrats who embrace our progressive and populist roots. And we were thrilled to be listed alongside uh, Bill de Blasio. You know, we are natural allies with Bill de Blasio in, in the state of political nature. The fact that uh, you know he stands with us today in, in Political Magazine, where they, they, where objective observers say these people are obviously on the same team, and then yesterday uh, he stands with a completely different crowd, shows that he really uh, that, that mistake was made yesterday. There, were, as I said, a wild scramble to save the Hockel, uh, a wild scramble to save the uh, the uh, sinking Hockel campaign. Uh, has led to um, perversions of the natural order. What do you make of it? You were just at another debate where yes. you were without Andrew Cuomo. What, what, do you, what do you make of that and, and why he's doing that? According to Andrew Cuomo, debates are a disservice to democracy. <laughs> and interfering in your own anti-corruption commission when it gets too close to your own friends is just this, the uh, basic expectation of a governor. He seems to have everything upside down. What I see is that Andrew Cuomo seems very uncomfortable uh, really defending his own record. And after four years, I think a lot of New Yorkers would like to understand why he's pursued the policies he's pursued. He's not serving the interests of New York. The big concern here is that Andrew Cuomo is acting in a self-serving way. And the basic obligation of any public uh, official 
elected or seeking public office is to put the interests of their constituents first. That's not what, not what he's doing. Time of Day Media has released a video showing Andrew Cuomo selling off the state piece by piece. Is this tied to your campaign in any way? You know anything about no, it? I haven't seen it. Um, but I'd love to see it. <laughs> schools more than twice in four years. Instead, he's allied himself with Eva Moskowitz, who's pushing fundamentally for the privatization of our public education. I think there's a role for charter schools, but they should not be replacing traditional public education. We have to make sure no funding is taken out of our traditional public education to pay for charter schools. I'm opposed to co locations and I'm deeply opposed to all these different assaults on public education itself, because public education is the infrastructure of democracy. I'm going to add something on the, the debate question. You know, we've been challenging uh, Andrew Cuomo and Kathy Hochul uh, repeatedly uh, two debates. They have uh, wishy washy the question. They said, well, I don't control my campaign. They make the decisions, despite the fact that the commission is Andrew Cuomo, but the campaign is not Andrew Cuomo in some uh, mysterious way. But I want to issue a different challenge right now. Uh, we challenge them to debate. I would like to challenge Kathy Hochul and Andrew Cuomo to say our names. <laughs> I would like. They seem to have unable to realize that we uh, even exist. And I would like to challenge them to have the basic civility, the basic human decency, to mention our names in public. I think it is disrespectful and polite for our serious candidates. We are on the ballot. And they have made a mockery of this primary process. I'm asking for one simple thing. Please mention our names. Please acknowledge the reason. Could you talk about the privatization of Medicaid? If you talk about the privatization of Medicaid, the privatization, just like charter schools being private, education being privatized, Medicaid is now under the Cuomo regime is being privatized. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I'm mostly going to talk about education today, but I will say that it fits within a larger effort, which is a very non-democratic approach not part of the traditional Democratic Party. It's a larger effort by Andrew Cuomo to privatize so many of our public services, whether it be nursing homes or the Long Island Power Authority or uh, what's happening with Litch, Long Island College Hospital. There's so many basic public institutions that Andrew Cuomo has been on the forefront of trying to make private. One more question. One more question. You're, you're both college professors, you're both educators. You talked about what students need to one thing smaller class size. What do you feel that public school teachers need? The most important thing that we can give for our students and our teachers is respect and trust. Teachers go into teaching because they, they, they love children and they want to bring them from one place to another. They want to explore their own possibilities. And they bring an enormous amount of creativity into the classroom, the kind of creativity that, oh, I guess you have to go back to school. <laughs> uh, the kind of creativity we just heard about. They need our respect and our trust because it is a hard job. And Andrew Cuomo treats teachers like suspects instead of as the people who are representative, who are, are doing some of the most important work in society. Yeah, you know, there's, a, there's something deeper uh, wrong with our uh, society and our state where, you know, teachers who do so, so much valuable work struggle to get by. And then, you know, a, a, an entry-level person, an investment bank, or frankly a law firm, uh, that, you know, does not spare our own industry, you know, makes more money in, in a single year than a teacher will make in, in multiple years. And, and it, it, it really asks where our priority is. One group of people is... is are raising people, are contributing to the future. The other, particularly in the case of Wall Street the last couple of years, has done actual damage to the economy as opposed to helping it. And somehow we reward the one and punish the latter, and our priorities are, in my mind, upside down. So I've also, on Twitter, challenged Campbell Brown to a debate, by the way, um, who is the new face of disrespecting teachers um, and the new face of privatization. We've seen so many different bases of this since 2008, and it is so important to stand strong against this assault, because our, the future of our state, the future of opportunity, and the future of our, our, our uh, the, the next generation of leaders are going to come out of this public education.
education system. Thank you very much. Thank you.